The Stormcast Eternals are the stars of the Realms of Ruin show and offer a very powerful roster full of technical ranged units, thick armor and air superiority. But how exactly should you go about using them if you're one of these 70 people still playing this game? Let's take a look and find out. Just before we get to the units of it, we should mention that all Stormcast units have a passive called Reclaiming Bolts. Whenever an entity falls in combat, bolts of lightning come down to take them home, dealing damage to nearby enemies in the process. It's not a ton of damage to start out with, but it gives enemies one last hit of damage before they take down units in combat, and makes the sting of losing a unit just a little bit less painful. And with that, let's begin with the Liberators. These are a tier 1 heavy unit, and these are your early game line holders with great defense, but not a lot of offense. They can hold most non-heroic tier 1 enemies at bay for a good long while, but will need help dealing much damage, so be sure to back them up with heroes or ranged units for some added power which should be reserved when Realmstone is sparse for when they're up against something really tough, but later on once you have more coming in, use it before combat to keep them healthy and prevent too many trips back to base since they're not the fastest units in the world. At tier 1 technology, you can increase their defense even further, which is never a waste of resources and really helps them scale into tier 2 until they eventually get replaced. And finally, at tier 3, they and all tier 1 units can increase the amount of damage dealt when units fall and are reclaimed by lightning, making charges into certain doom a viable strategy to get rid of tier 1 units. Next up we have Vanguard Hunters, these are a tier 1 assault unit. These are scouting units for the early game with faster speed and more damage than the Liberators, but a lot less defense. That being said, despite what the Rock Paper Scissors system would have you believe, these guys are actually far better at taking out ranged units than the Liberators. This is all due to their movement speed and charge ability. Liberators get stuck in melee with whatever comes with them first since they're pretty damn slow, but these guys can easily navigate around enemies and use their charge to quickly close the gap and get into enemy backlines and take them down. Honestly, ranged units are just about the only thing that they can take down safely since most other melee combat, even if they win it, will result in heavy casualties, so regular trips back to base will be in order to keep them topped up. They can also make use of their Astral Compass ability to reveal target areas of the map, which can be very useful for scouting ahead when looking to move forward. As for tech, they have the choice of two tier 1 options. Hidden Paths grants them the ability to become hidden and gain movement speed until time runs out or they engage in combat, or they can go for Sigmarite Armor for more defense. Personally, the armor is going to be more useful in nearly every scenario since sneaking around is more of a gimmick, but it can still be a lot of fun, so be sure to give it at least one try in your games. Personally, I tend to stick with Liberators right from the early game since they tend to be more consistently useful, but these are definitely a viable unit, they just need a bit more management. Next we have the Vanguard Raptor Hurricanes, and these are your tier 1 ranged unit. These are of course your early game ranged, which does mean they're going to be your main damage dealers when getting started. They have a decent range and only a small amount of setup time, so it can be fine pretty quickly once they reach the combat area. They'll pick most units apart pretty well, but of course most of the time need something there to hold back melee troops to allow them to keep firing. If caught in melee, just retreat them and bring them back as soon as they're healthy, as they won't beat basically anything in close quarters. Honestly, not much to say about these guys. Super simple range troop. Keep them back and firing on anything they can, and they'll do great. At tier 2, they get the choice of two technologies. They can swap their weapons for long strikes, which vastly increases their range at the cost of a little bit of setup time, as well as granting them the pinning shot ability, stunning enemies in the line. Or they can choose the rapid fire ability, which rains bolts down on a target area, similar to Tyrande Starfall from Heroes of the Storm. Never forget. Personally, I see no reason to ever not go long strikes. More range just means they can hold an even larger area from an even safer position and makes using them risk free into a breeze. Rapid fire can be useful for clearing out a clump quickly, but you could do the same amount of damage from half the map away anyway, so it's not essential. In reality, both are great options, so always play for what's in front of you. And closing out tier 1, we have our Knight Vexlor. This is our tier 1 hero unit, and this guy really does lead from the front. The melee capabilities are pretty top notch, being able to take on a couple of units at once and hold their own pretty well. That said, they'll take a beating for their trouble, so back them up in any way that you can is advised, especially once you consider the banner of the Reforged ability. This heals and reinforces nearby allied units, so having as many low HP units nearby as possible when casting is the way to go to get as much value as you can out of each cast. As well as this, they can make use of charge to quickly close the gap between them and units and deal some nice damage in the process. You have the choice of two tier 1 techs for these guys. The Valiant Resolve ability passively grants shields to nearby allied units, or Vigor increases health and damage. If using this guy alone in combat, then Vigor works great. Otherwise, Resolve is where it's at to lift your whole army along with him. Overall, it's a great Stein hero as capable of dealing a bunch of damage as it is tanking a bunch of damage and doing a bunch of healing. Bottom line is, it does a bunch of bunches of stuff really well. Kicking off tier 2, we have the Prosecutors, which are an assault unit, and we also have our first flying unit. These are super speedy and work great for reacting across the map wherever needed. The speed also, of course, makes them excellent at taking on enemy ranged troops as they can easily enter, as they can easily enter enemy backline flying right over the heads of melee troops, no problem. However, if they get caught in combat with more than just the ranged units, they may start to struggle as their small unit size does mean that they're easily outnumbered. Especially if they start to take missile fire, pull them out and get them healed up. Their speed in this means they can get right back to the action, no problem anyway, so it's better to keep them alive and healthy. 
They also start out with a couple of abilities. Barrage is great for dealing large amounts of damage in an area while staying at a safe range, and Herald is great for closing the gap and dealing large amounts of damage to units caught in an area. Both are worth using whenever the opportunity arises, especially Heralds for entering combat. Finally, at tier 3, they can gain a tech to increase their defense, which is very worth doing as it's really the only area that they struggle in. Next up, we have Evocators. These are your tier 2 defenders, but now they come with a lot more offensive power than Liberators. They're still nice and tanky, but can also deal great damage in melee, so require a touch less babysitting if they're against lower tier units. Against more elite enemies, then assistance from other units will of course go a long way, but that goes without saying, really. They also come with the Empower Aura, which allows them to grant nearby allied units a shield, armor, and movement speed, whilst damaging enemies caught in the same area. It's a great ability to use during big fights and give your entire army some buffs and give you an edge no matter what you're fighting. At tier 2, they have the choice between two techs. Potent Aura increases the radius of their empowering aura, and Sigmarite's armor increases their defense. Personally, the radius is pretty dummy large for me already, so increased defense would be my go-to, but if you want to make sure your entire army sees those buffs, then feel free to go that way. Next, we have the Celestar Ballista, closing out tier 2 with the final ranged units of the roster. The Celestar has about as much range as the Long Strikes, but deals much more concentrated damage from its single entity ballista. These will deal massive damage to whatever they hit, but are especially effective versus single entities to focus all of that damage into a single health bar, rather than spreading it between different entities. It is, however, pretty much useless in melee, has long setup time, and is incapable of retreating, so one stuck in melee must be saved by other units if you want it to survive. Keep an eye on it at all times to ensure it's safe, as losing one of these to a flank can hurt a whole lot. As for tech, at tier 2 you have two options. Hardened Munitions increases damage versus heroes and monsters, making it even better at the job they should already be doing, or Lightning Charge Shots showers explosive bolts into an area similar to Rapid Fire from the Raptors. Honestly, either are good, whether you want to really hone in on that single entity killer vibe, or grab a bit of area damage to diversify. Kicking off tier 3 with the Annihilators, we have our final frontline unit, and these are some thick boys. These are incredibly tanky and can hold back enemies for a very long time, whilst not doing too badly damage-wise in the process. Of course, they're not damage powerhouses in straight combat, because they gotta have some downsides, but they can still hold their own just fine until support gets there. They do have some great damage in the form of their Force of a Falling Star ability, however, which allows them to charge straight through enemy units, knocking them back and dealing massive damage both from impact and proximity. It's a great way to end combat, though be mindful of their final destination, as they can pretty easily get themselves in far too deep if you aim it poorly. Overall, they're a great final word for the front lines, and if you manage to get a few of them to lead your final charge, you'll be in a good position to win no matter what you come up against. Next up, the Storm Drake Guard, and this is perhaps the most iconic unit in the roster. I mean, it's a little dragon with someone jousting on the back of it. What more do you need in life? In practice, it's about as devastating as it looks, but it can also be a little bit of a glass cannon. Flight makes it easy to get into wherever you want in the enemy lines, so whether you want to shut down range or get right into the middle of the front lines, you can do both, no problem. Shutting down ranged units should be a high priority, however, since this guy is very vulnerable to focus fire and can go down fast even if targeted by the most basic of missile units. They also come with a range of powerful abilities. First is their Draconic Onslaught, which allows them to dive to the ground and knock back enemies caught in the area for massive damage. This is great for engaging wherever and whatever you want, similar to Prosecutors. Draconic Flamestream can only be used on the ground and covers an expanding area in fire, dealing massive damage to enemies caught inside. Draconic Fireball can only be used from the air and does the same but in a circular area. All of these are great, so use them whenever possible for massive damage. The only bad way to use this guy is to not use it. So throw into combat, watch the HP bar, and rack up the kills. And our final unit is the tier 3 hero, the Lord Celestant. This is a very combat focused hero with massive melee damage versus pretty much anything you put them up against. If you've used Sigrun in the campaign, this is pretty much her, so combat specialists that want to lead armies from the front and deal massive damage to anything they can find. There really isn't much they can't take on and come out on top, especially if they have backup. Then you add on all of their abilities. They have a charge, so it can easily close the gap and deal some extra damage on impact. Furious Retribution grants all nearby allied units increased damage, movement speed, and unstoppable, making it great to use as the lines clash to heavily increase damage and prevent units from being warded off from any enemy status effects. Call forth the storm must be used from outside of melee and summons a storm in a large area of effect, dealing massive damage to all enemies caught inside for the full duration. This is great to use just before combat to cover an entire battling area in damage and rack up tons of kills on enemies trapped in combat. This is a fantastic hero to lead those final charges, so pick it up as soon as you can for tons of value. The Stormcasts also have access to a range of buildings to place on Bastions. The Raffle Idol is their defense building. This attacks enemies in a tagged area. This area can be moved, removes the Fog of War, and deals more damage the larger the Bastion area grows. When upgraded, it can now target flying units, forcing them to the ground. As for research, there are two projects which both apply to all Bastion buildings. At tier 2 you can pick up Unyielding Mortar, which increases their defense versus all damage, and at tier 3 you can get Azerite Protection, which damages enemy units attacking Bastions. They have the Outpost Siphon, which is their Realmstone Harvester. This generates Realmstone up to 10 based on an area. Upgrading this increases maximum production to 25. 
The Sigmarite Way Shrine is their support building. It heals and reinforces nearby allied units, increases the amount of units that you can summon at once by one to a maximum of four, and the upgrade increases this amount to two, again, to a maximum of four. And lastly, the Etherwing Roost is, of course, their ward building. This removes the fog of war in the area, reveals hidden enemy units, and generates command up to nine, again, based on the area. Upgrading this increases the maximum command gain to 15, allows an additional research project to be worked on at once, and gains the Etherwing Patrol ability, revealing enemy units and removing the fog of war in a target location. And lastly, we have the Faction ability. For the Stormcast, this is Deep Strike. This allows you to instantly summon any units in the roster to a visible target location, dealing damage to all nearby enemies. Cost of units is increased over regular recruitment, and this has a 30 second cooldown, so regular recruitment is still very necessary for getting the majority of your army, but this is a great way to bring in instant reinforcements and disrupt enemies in the process. And that is everything you need to know about the Stormcast Eternals in Realms of Ruin. Let me know what you think of the faction in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and if you want more Realms of Ruin, then check out my Disciples of Siege guide right here.